<laughs> All right, so in lecture 13 and lecture 14, we introduce the frequency domain method. for the analysis of a closed loop system the idea was that we will evaluate the Laplace variable at only the imaginary part and study the magnitude and the phase and in lecture 14 you saw a method to determine stability from it, it was a particular case. Now today we're going to do a general case. Uh, so the idea was, or, or the closed loop was of the form Like that, where kg is the loop gain. Okay, so we might have a different form. We can put it in this form and then study the um, characteristic equation. So the associated characteristic equation. is 1 plus kg j omega equal to 0. So we observe that <clears throat> this as a complex number will have certain properties because I have here 1 and I have 0 here. In particular, when this equation is satisfied at a particular omega, what is the absolute value of kg at that omega? One. 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 The absolute value is one. Oh. Right? And the phase? Minus 180. Minus 180. Okay? <coughs> or any multiple. So that was the observation. And what we did was to um, do several plots of the body plots of the magnitude and the phase. So this is one of the examples. Here we have a plant. It's a third order plant with a proportional controller. <clears throat> you write down uh, the transfer function. You identify the loop k. And then the parameter that you might want to change uh, is this kp. So you put this into the format that we discussed, into the building block formats. So this is a pole at zero, this is a finite pole of multiplicity two, and this is a gain. And then what we do is to plot the magnitude of k, the magnitude of one over j omega, and the magnitude of one over j omega plus one squared independently, and then we add them up because we are plotting the dv version of that, which allows you to do that uh, nice a summation and then we plot the phase of each of these <coughs> building blocks one two and three and then we add them up as well because of the fact that the product and division of a complex number lead to additions and subtractions of phases okay so at the at the end of the day for us is what's going to happen with kgj omega as a function of omega would i hit um magnitude 1 and phase minus 180 with the right conditions. So that's what the, the Nyquist plot, so the Nyquist plot uh, is a plot of k g j omega as a function of omega.
But the difference from the body plot is that we're going to plot both things at the same time. That's a complex number. Okay. A complex number. So what is the idea here is that we're going to rewrite k g j omega, which is a complex number, in the fossorial form, which is I will have the absolute value of that complex number, and I will have the angle of that complex number. <coughs> So the idea is to rewrite so we rewrite it as a complex number like this. Now as I mentioned from, from that example, this absolute value part that I need in my new plot, okay could come directly from the body plot of magnitude. Okay. So this thing, um, so this will come from body plot of magnitude. And then this other piece here will come from <coughs> body plot of faces. Okay. So again, now that I know how to plot this by dividing partitioning my loop gain in little building blocks and I know how to plot this against a function of omega in a particular scale you already know that separately now I'm going to build them together back okay make sense so for the angle is easy because um, all I need to do is to say okay at this omega let's take the example again At this omega, let's say the one that I have right here marked, omega star, at this omega, I have minus 180 degrees in my asymptote body phase. It's not exact, okay? I have minus 180, okay? And what is the magnitude I have? I have, if the red is the right one, yes. I have zero dB. Okay, so I can read the phase right away, minus 180, and the, the magnitude I need to invert back to times, right? Because 0 dB, and it does my question, what is 0 dB giving, what is giving me 0 dB? So 20 log of x equal to 0, so then you solve for that, that would be 1, right? So 1 gives you 0 dB, and that means that the magnitude for that particular mega star, when I do this Nyquist plot, this will be a vector in a complex plane that has magnitude 1 and angle minus 180. Okay? And I keep sweeping this over and over for each omega. Okay, so I will start at omega equal to 0, which is somewhere here that we cannot see because this is a log scale. And then I will start plotting my... my um, my magnitude and phase as a vector, I keep sweeping and then all the way to omega infinity, which I cannot see yet. Okay? So that will be the positive omega part. I do the same for the negative omega part, which you don't have here. But I'm gonna tell you how you get it, okay? So once you have the whole on a complex plane, which now is a complex plane of the 
real and imaginary part of my k g j omega as a function of omega, then there is a test based on that plot that um, will tell me whether the closed loop system is stable or not. No matter whether large gain implies stability and small gain, in, uh, instability and small gain implies stability, which was the criterion that you saw in the previous lecture. So this is the thing. If you have a frequency method, uh, if you have to apply a frequency method, you come and apply the macros right away, okay? But the previous method is almost like a warm up to this. So that's the idea, that's the concept, that's all we want to do. Once we have the plot, which is some sort of an artistic thing, you get pretty nice contour plots, uh, pretty cute. Every time my daughter sees my notes, she <laughs> makes them red and pink, and it looks really nice and purple. And, uh, but they get very nice shapes, like very interesting shapes, and then the question is, do I have stability or not from that plot? Okay, make sense? Questions? Okay. So let's do that. I have a few that I can do by hand, and then other ones that I have on the slides, which would be allowing us to go faster. Okay, let's see, they're frozen here. Okay. So that's the whole thing. All right, so let's do an example. And I need your, your help with this, so sample. And this will be a good warm up for the for the quiz. So let's do it. So <coughs> consider the closed loop. <coughs> given by so I have my unitary negative feedback loop as usual. I have a proportional controller and I have a second order plant that is of the form one over s plus one square. Okay, so we have that and our goal is is to draw the Nyquist plot. So in simple terms, it would be a complex plane, where now I have here is the real <coughs> of k, g, j, omega, <coughs> and here is the imaginary of k, g, j, omega, and now I have here the Essentially, if, I, if that point is in the Nyquist plot, then this will correspond to some omega, let's call it omega star, so this will be k, g, j omega star as a complex number. Meaning that this distance here will be the absolute value of the complex number at omega star in times, not in dB, and this will be the angle. <coughs> this will be the angle of k, g, j, omega star. In degrees, it's easier, right, than in radians, so we already have it in degrees, so that's pretty good. Okay, our goal is to draw the Nyquist plot. Okay. So let me pull this up. And now I'll tell you how we do this. First step is to draw the body plot. Okay? All right. So to draw the body plot, the first thing is to identify the kgj omega, right? 
So first thing is, what is kgj omega for from this? Kp, one over j omega plus one squared. Okay? You with me? Okay, so I have again, so I can say again is Kp for my building block, and I have a tau that is one, right? Because I have j omega tau plus one tau is equal to one. Okay, so these are from the from the building blocks. The body building blocks. Okay. Good, so I'm gonna try to sketch it very quickly. This is not something we wanna spend too much time on. So I'm gonna have um, omega, and then let's say this is 0 0.01, 0 0.1, 1, 10, and so on. <coughs> The point I care about is one, right? Because that's one over tau, and that's where the break point will be for this building block. Okay, so <clears throat> let's let's say that let Kp be free, and then we're gonna do a root locus. Okay, let Kp be free. So for the time being, I will just forget about it, and then we'll plot this building block for the magnitude, okay? So what do I get here? This is a pole, so the magnitude goes down. Minus 40, because, minus 40 because I have a multiplicity to pole, right? So I could do in steps, but I think you guys have already done it. So my asymptote for the body would be this zero dB line and then if this is minus 20 and this is minus 40, then I will have in one decade, I will have gone down that much, right? So that's what happens. So this will be the <coughs> magnitude of J omega plus one minus two in dB, asymptote. <coughs> the next thing I can do is to plot the face. So I'll try to align it. So these are again 0 0.01, 0 0.1, 10. And now my, I guess you, you probably do mark it. I did mark it in my notes. So that's where the effect of the pole at S minus one, right? That's not where the pole is, but that's the effect on J omega um, will pop up. And because it's a pole and I'm letting Kp be free and let's say equal to one, then I have zero effect of that pole on phase before one decade in my asymptote. At the location where the pole is in omega effect wise, I will have each pole contributing Negative, each pole negative 45. I have two minus 90. So let's say that this is minus 90. And then the effect starts in an asymptote 
a plot it starts one decade before and ends one decade after, right? So that's my face. So that's my face of one of j omega plus one <coughs> minus two. I think. And maybe we should say that this goes to minus 40 dB per decade, and that this goes to minus 90 degree per decade. So we have that. Now what I can do is figure out some points that um, I might be interested in. So I'll pick a few. I have here four points. So this is one point. I'm going to circle it. I'm going to call it A. And I'm going to say the following. I would like at omega equal to A, which is 0 0.01, I would like to evaluate the magnitude of kgj omega. And I would like to evaluate the angle of kgj omega. So this is to do the Nyquist, or to draw Nyquist. This is the idea. And then you can do it for infinitely many points once you do it a few times. But let's just pick this. So at, at this point, omega equal to a, which is 0 0.01, then I have 0 degrees in magnitude, which when you invert back, this will be 1 times for the magnitude of kgj omega. And the phase, again, we all consider in kp, is going to be 0 degrees. Now I'll pick another point. I pick this point B. And for the asymptote, looks like I have the same magnitude because zero dB is still. And the asymptote angle is also telling me zero. However, if you look at the book, there is an error there, and that error will be which we don't need to know because, again, we are doing our last So This is approximately minus 10 degrees. Okay. Now, when we are at the point C, and you see the point C, the natural one will be to pick is the one that is um, where the break is. So I'm going to take this point C there. <coughs> Now, the magnitude will be 1, but actually, if you look at it, there, are, there is a minus 6 dB error there. So this is actually going to be, in reality, 0 0.5, which is a big difference. But you'll see that that doesn't make a lot of um, problem either. But the angle now is important, right? What happened to the angle? At that point, omega c, now it went to minus 90. So that's what we will break down. And then the D point, which is one decade after the, the double pole, this will give us a minus 40, and that is 0 0.01 if you do the calculation. And the phase for that from the asymptote will be minus 180 degrees. The real value is approximately minus 170 degrees. So now what we have is that, let's say, let's pick one of these, this one. This is a complex number with magnitude equal to 1 and phase equal to 0. So in the complex plane, this guy is 
this vector if you will okay in the complex plane you with me so that's what this is giving us so now we go to the um, to the real Nyquist plot so using this sample point we can draw the Nyquist plot So this will be now the real of k, g, j omega, as we said earlier. This is the imaginary of k, g, j omega. And now I'm going to say, uh, basically I'm going to sweep omega and plot k, g, j omega as a complex number. Okay, so point A, which will be for omega A, will give me, as I said, this, this point here. This is for omega equal to A. Okay. Point B, it gives me one and zero, but I know that there is a little bit of an error, right? From that? So I know that this number for omega equal to a will be, well, omega equal to b is gonna be a little bit below that. If I remember that, I plot it. If I don't pick another b point that tells you something else. So let's jump to c. So c will be one. C will be 1 in magnitude, but with an angle of minus 90. So this will be for omega equal to C. And this will be minus 1. So length 1, but because of the angle is <coughs> minus 90, is pointing in that direction. Okay? What's going to happen is that, is that if, I, if I would have swept... more points between A and C, I would have gone from 0 to minus 90 almost with the same magnitude, right? And in the asymptote, what's going to happen is that all I will be able to, to extract will be a circle, right? So essentially, I move in this direction as omega went from very small positive to a little larger positive. Okay? So I walked, if you will, from that frequency <coughs> to small to larger frequency and I move in this direction. That's an important thing to realize. But all I know at this point are this one and minus one. Okay? Now what is interesting is what happened at point D. What do you expect to have at point D? Something ever so slightly close to the origin, but just off to the left a little bit. Correct. So if I were to plot the, um, the, the, this point here, right? So it was 0 0.01, so it wouldn't, we will not be able to see it much. It will be very close to, to 0, and it will have an angle that is minus 180, <coughs> right? So that's what the guy is going to do. This will be my omega equal to d. And if you look at the plot, what happens is that as you get closer to minus 180, your magnitude gets smaller and smaller. Okay? So what's going to happen is that this guy, 
it's going to do, because it's monotone, it's going to do shrink at some rate like that. Okay. Now, these are all asymptotes. So, where is the true plot? Okay, so I have it here. Is right here. So if you recognize that there is a little bit of an error uh, on the breakpoints, <laughs> and the book gives you that information, again, it's not very important, uh, then this minus one shouldn't have been where you cross, you cross at minus one half because of the asymptote error. This is a true, the best I could do it. Isn't it pretty? Uh, um, Nyquist plot. Okay, so from very small frequency all the way to very large frequency, you convert later. Okay, now what I need to do also is to do the negative frequency one. Okay, so how do I do that? So now I go to this plot. And what I realize is that if I flip omega into minus omega, all that my magnitude is going to do is to flip and get mirrored to the left. So you grab your plot, you mirror it, and then for minus omega you will have, if you go from zero but the small omega to very negative, you're gonna go the same way that you did here, but decrease, okay? And that's what happened here. In this plot, what you see is that if you go towards negative omega, then your magnitude will remain almost zero dB or one, will become minus one half because of the true decay, and then you're gonna converge towards zero. The same you do for the face, you mirror the face. The face will be mirror. <coughs> and then you will go from zero degree to minus 180. Sorry, to 180. Now, the difference is that when you mirror it, you <coughs> put a negative on the face. So it's minus the face mirror. So I'm going to write it down. But that's how you get to these plots. That's how you get to these plots. Now, a question for you I would like to ask is, we got the plot. Good news, there is Nyquist of uh, transfer function in MATLAB, and it will give you this plot. Okay? So that's good news. So we got this plot. Now, do we have a stability of the closed loop system? Okay. Well, yeah. I don't know. Yes. But how do you get that? Because it's even the amount of time when you cross the wire. So what is the what is the important point here? Characteristic equation is one plus k g j omega equal to zero, or k g j omega equal to minus one. What is minus one as a complex number? Here. Okay. So what happens is that this plot has a distance to this point that is very, very particular. You never en encircle this point. Okay. I'll tell you a little bit about that in a second. But you can validate that with root locus, right? So let's do the root locus for this. So now I would say uh, with Han some hand waving at, at this point, this is what this is what we get. It is symmetric. This is for <coughs> omega less than zero. 
Uh, the true one is crossing by one minus one half. But I mean, whether this point is here or here doesn't matter because encircling will be the same. So that's why I say it's not a, it's not a problem. So this one is the true angle C slab. Um, now the question is: Is the closed loop system stable? Well, since we know. We know root locus. Let's do the root locus for KP larger or equal than zero varying. Okay? So, how do we do the root locus? We write down the characteristic equation, which in this case is this. Right? We identify the parameter we want to change. This is my changing parameter. And um, we identify this to be L. And then we do the root locus. Another complex plane plot is not the axis matching the complex plane plot that I just did. It's a different plot, right? So now will be the real of S and the imaginary of S, okay? So um, the roots, so L of S is B divided by A with B equal to one and A equal to S plus one square. What do I know about the roots of the closed loop system for K equal to zero? Why? So what I know is that for gain or for my parameter equal to zero, the poles of the closed loop system are at the roots of A. <coughs> what are the roots of A? Minus one, minus one with multiplicity? Two. Two. So I go, I find minus one. And I have a double pole there. Double. Now, that's the first step, right? Second step, whether we have root locus in the real axis. So we poke every point and we say, is this point to the left of an odd number of poles plus zero? So this is not in the root locus because it's not to the left of such number. And this one is similarly there, right? Okay. So what do you think is going to happen with this root locus? It's going to shoot up. Right, so we apply the next rules, and then these guys are gonna go up, no. So this is a root locus. Is it a KP that gives me instability? No. So if you know this, then what you see right here should also tell me somehow that I don't have instability. So this is one, and this is here minus one. The reason is because this minus one has a very specific property. Okay? 
So here is the recipe. Any questions about the root locus? Could you tell that there's not a KP that gives me stability? Yeah. But how do you, how do you know? KP non-negative, yes. Because if the root locus shows you that all the roots are always on the left half plane, there is no KP that will give you instability, right? But that's a good question. So then the answer is from from root locus we have a stability for all KP really equivalent zero. So how do we get that information from the body plot? Okay. Again, remember, for this simple system, second order system, we don't even need to do the Nyquist, right? Again, at the end of the day, all these tools are for you to figure out when to apply them, right? So if it is a very low dimensional system, why would you do body plot unless for someone asks you to do the body plot, right? Uh, I might do that, but just for the <laughs> sake of concept, right? Uh, because you want to make sure you understand in simple problems that you can solve, but when you have a real problem, you have a fifth dimensional system, maybe the root locus is very complicated. Maybe you can just get away with an analysis in the body plot in the Nyquist. So you do the Nyquist, okay? So again, so you don't get confused. This is not a very useful tool for this problem. You really know how to answer it. How do you do it in general? So that's the somewhat recipe. So you plot what we did today, the body plot. You plot the Nyquist, which is no more than the information in the body plot, but with magnitude in times and the phase at the same time as a complex number. Okay? Now you look at the number minus one. The importance of minus one is because that's where k, g, j, omega is uh, <coughs> satisfying the characteristic equation. And then you evaluate the number of encirclements of minus one. Okay? You call the number n. Then you determine the number of unstable poles of kgj omega. You know that because you just check where the poles are by simple inspection, and then you call that number p. And then you compute this addition, n and p. n has a sign. So if you encircle clockwise or counterclockwise, change the sign. I'll tell you in a second how that goes. But you add those up and you get Z. Okay? That's again an auxiliary number. If Z is equal to zero, then you get the stability. That's a check. Okay? So you need to have the plot and you need to know now how to do the encirclement. What about encirclement? What does that mean? Okay? All right. So the way you do it is you essentially walk through the Nyquist plot, the curve, from omega positive, but very small, we call that zero plus, to omega infinity. And then from omega, omega minus infinity to very small, but negative, zero minus. Okay? So if we were to go into this plot right here, you walk from omega zero plus all the way to omega infinity, and then from omega infinity all the way to omega zero minus. Okay? When you did that walk, you never encircle this point. Right? Because you are here. You will have encircled that point if you now imagine that this is on the other side and your this point, because of the value of k, is somewhere here. Then you will have encircled it. <coughs> when you do like this, you have uh, encirclement. But in this case, n is equal to zero. We had that the poles of k g, j, omega are both at minus 1, p is equal to 0, 0 plus 0, z equal to 0, stability. Okay? 
But remember that this plot is for kp free or kp equal to 1. Now I make kp equal to 10. This number 1 at omega equal to a will go to 10. This point which is in true reality minus 1 half is going to go to minus 5. And this up here will go as well. This will be maximized. But because of this approach, it will never encircle minus 1. Keep making the gain larger and larger. There are no encirclements. OK? So the message is that no matter what kp is, there is no encirclement of the point minus 1. That's what we did obtain from the root laws. OK? You with me? OK, so that is that. So we do the walk. And this is my explanation because I like finding simple ways. When you do the walk, you should be looking at the point minus one. Okay? Because that's what's going to tell you whether you have an encirclement. I'll show you in an example in a second. If the number of encirclement is not zero, which is not in that example, but if it is not zero, and the encirclement is clockwise, meaning that when I look at it, I create a clockwise term, then n will be <coughs> positive. So clockwise encirclement give you positive n, while counterclockwise encirclement will give you negative n. And it might be that as you walk, you do one clockwise encirclement and one negative, so counterclockwise encirclement, and then they cancel out. So the overall, the net term is zero. So for this case, as I said, p equal to zero, n equal to zero, zero plus zero is zero, is stable for any kp. Here's a little bit of a trick. I said that you could plot this with free kp, right? Now what you could do is to, as we said before, is kgj omega equal to minus kp, minus 1 over kp in the characteristic equation. So your point minus 1 becomes now minus 1 over kp. So you can put the change of the gain not in the building blocks contribution to the magnitude of phase, but on the point minus one. And what happens here now is that it's a simple problem because I plot this for kp equal to one, and now I look myself relative to minus one over kp for kp positive. And as I change this as kp is positive, all I can do is to keep it on this side. Only with infinity, I will get to zero. But that's not attainable. So you can say that no matter what kp is, minus one over kp is never encircled by the net. But now you already realize that if I change kp to be negative, then this guy could be inside here. And when it's inside here, let's say it's right here at, the, at the plus one half, Right? Kp is minus one half. Minus minus two. Minus two. Then when I walk, I look from this point toward this point and I look and I'm going clockwise, right? And I'm going clockwise and I'm going clockwise and I did a half turn and then I keep going and I go clockwise and I go clockwise and I go clockwise. When I landed right here, I did my whole walk. I ended up with a full turn clockwise n is equal to 1, positive because I did it clockwise. There are no unstable poles of the kgj omega. p is equal to 0, z is equal to 1, unstability. So if I am here, I'm unstable. But if my kp is negative but large enough, small enough. 
Yeah. Negative on the smaller one, right? I need to put it all the way here. As kp is negative on the small, this number becomes very positive. Then I will not have any encirclement from here. The same that happened from here. So what, now you can look at this and do a little more than what you did for root locus because the root locus plot that we did was for positive root. And from here you can say for the entire range of kp, positive and negative, whether you have stability or not, which will boil down, in this case, whether you can uh, determine the range of Kp such that you don't land here. Your minus one over Kp does not land here. Okay. Questions? I'm having trouble understanding why I'm 